Hey everyone, Adam Guthrie here and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you one of my favourite recipes tonight and that is a whole food, plant-based musman curry. And um, it's one of my favourite dishes. In actual fact, I learnt this recipe when in Thailand, although it wasn't whole food, plant-based. Um, it's a great cooking school. If you're ever in Thailand, it's a vegan cooking school. And it's called May KD. And it's in Bangkok. And May takes you to the markets, brings you back, and makes a whole bunch of curries with you. And one of them was her musman. And this is my version of that, because I don't know if you know my story, but my story was this. Um, I was 110 kilos. And, which is pretty big. If you go to my website and check it out, you can see some of you already know my story. But um, I was 110 kilos, I was a pretty big boy. And at age 39, I had a heart attack. And it was pretty freaky. But as a result of that, I came across, very shortly after, what's called a whole food, plant-based diet. And I followed it. I watched Forks Over Knives. And I've seen people who had heart attacks reverse heart disease and looking younger than they did 20 years later than when they had the heart attack. So I thought, I can do this. I'm actually a chef. So um, I'm gonna enjoy playing around with this. So I did, I started, I started to um, play around, learnt the principles. I did the um, E. Cornell plant-based nutrition course, which taught me a lot. And, um, and then I started making the food. And the food, was amazing. The food, it was the thing that actually transformed my health and my life. It took me, you know, from having this heart attack to within six months, getting off all medication, getting off all medication. And it's now seven, eight years later, and I still don't have to take med medication. I get my numbers done every year. Um, my cholesterol is actually 3.8, which is, um, you know, cardiologists want to get you to 3.9 or below. <laughs> It's 3.8, my total cholesterol. And that's in Australian terms. I'm not sure what that is in America. Um, but it's truly incredible. And I've lost 30 kilos and I've maintained that weight for a long time. But not only that, it gave me a heap of energy. A heap of energy. So much energy that um, I went and did an Ironman triathlon. One of the toughest endurance events in the world. And... For those that don't know what that is, that's a 3.4 kilometer swim, followed by a 180 kilometer um, bike ride, and then straight off the bike, do a marathon, which is 42 kilometers. And I tell you, it, I did good on the swim, I did good on the ride, but the run smashed me. Like, about 200 meters into the run, I got these stomach cramps, and it was horrendous. I thought, I almost pulled out. But I didn't, it kept going, and I got across the finish line. But the reason why I tell you that is this, that this sort of food, a whole food, plant-based diet, prevents and reverses disease, heart disease in my case, but I've seen other people, I've got a program, people reversing diabetes, type two diabetes. Um, it's incredibly powerful. And I'm on this mission now to share with the world that plants reverse heart disease. It's not only just happened for me, but it's happened for heaps of people around the world. It's pretty powerful. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do, I'm going to make this musman curry. It's my favorite curry. And I'm gonna make it whole food plant-based. You might be thinking, well, Adam, you know, coconut milk is not whole food plant-based. I've discovered a way to make it whole food plant-based. Whole food plant-based, coconut milk. Um, if you go to Dr. Gregor's website and do Google, you know, coconut, and what happens in there, he's got um, a little video that explains that when you separate the fat from the fiber in the coconut and make coconut milk, which is what they do when they make coconut milk, they take the, the fat from it, and that's what you drink, that fat on its own raises your cholesterol. And then in turn, um, you know, lead, can lead to heart disease. So, um, if you keep the fiber with it, according to Dr. Gregor on his website, go check out his little video. If you keep the fiber, like eating shredded coconut or desiccated coconut, it actually doesn't raise the cholesterol and therefore puts you at less risk of having a heart attack. So, I thought, how do I do that? 
just soak, this is how you do it, and I've done it here, you just soak, okay? You just soak shredded coconut in water, and it's one part coconut to four parts water. What is it, guys? <laughs> Type it in if you like. It's one part coconut to four parts water. You soak it, and then you put it in one of these blenders, a high-powered blender, and puree it. Then you can freeze it, pull it out when you need it, you make, you know, luxes and curries and musman curries, and it's pretty cool. And according to Dr. Gregor, it doesn't raise cholesterol. Now, I've been eating this for a long time. I get my blood done every year, and my blood cholesterol, you know, stays pretty steady. So it's not affecting me. Um, so, guys, that's how you make the coconut whole food plant-based. Um, so, let's get started. What have we got here? Ingredients. I've done a bit of chopping already, and here's a chef tip, because I'm a chef. Here's a chef tip. Prepare everything before you go to the stove, okay? It's called mise en place. It's a French word, which means get everything ready, okay? So you chop up your onion, you chop up your tomato, you chop up your potatoes, you chop up your pumpkin, Okay, you spoon out your spices. You get everything ready onto plates or a big tray and then you take it to the stove. Because, have you ever done this before? You've gone to, um, you've started cooking, you're at the stove, then all of a sudden you go, oh, I need that ingredient. And you run, you run over to the pantry, you come back and when you come back, the thing's burnt. Anyone, anyone watching this ever experienced that? Well. If you do your mise en place, you do your prep, get everything chopped up and go to the stove, it ain't gonna happen. And you're gonna have a beautiful dish. Hope that's a good chef tip for you. So guys, a lot of people ask me, how do you chop your onion as a chef? Well, I've already chopped some of it, but I'll quickly just show you now if you'd like. So onion, you just top, chop off the root, a little bit of the root, you chop off the other end, you cut it in half that way from root down, and then you peel it. You just take it off. Here's another good tip. Here's another good chef tip. Always have a bowl that you put your trimmings in. Okay, you can use it for stock later and you don't waste anything and it keeps your bench clean. Who's a messy cook? Man, okay, messy cooks. Pots and pans, food everywhere. Anyone done a dinner party and there's been stuff everywhere? Well, <laughs> here's a good way to stop that. Is always have a pot, okay? Um, or a bowl that you can put your scraps into. The other thing, a good thing to have, is a bowl with some water in it and a sponge, okay? Just water and a sponge, and you wipe down your bench as you go. That way, it's all clean and tidy, and it's beautiful, and it's, you make incredible food without this mess and chaos around you. So, back to the onion. This is how you cut the onion. You cut it in half, and then the root end goes to the opposite end that you've got your knife in, and you just cut through the onion, lengthways like that, but you don't take it all the way to the end. You leave a little bit of root there, you just slice it this way, so it stays together. Then you turn it around so your root's away from you, and then you slice it down to the board, but once again, you don't go all the way to the end. You go all the way to the board, but not all the way to the end. That way you can still pick it up, it's all intact, okay? Then what you do, is you just go across this way and you get this beautiful little dice. Beautiful little dice. There we are. So there's the onion, done. Is that good? No mess, super quick, super easy. The other thing we're gonna to use tonight is kale. Okay, you could use spinach if you wanted to, you could use Swiss chards, you could use silver beet, up to you but it's really important to have leafy greens on a whole food plant-based diet. Can't stress enough, you wanna be eating at least four cups of leafy greens a day if you want to heal your body. The amazing thing about the greens, they dilate your artery, make the blood flow um, really easily in your body. Um, plus they've got a heap of other stuff in it, you know, there's protein in it, there's some um, calcium in it, there's magnesium, there's you know, heaps of stuff in this. It is the holy grail to good health is leafy greens. So you wanna be eating at least four cups a day. How many guys? At least how many? Four cups of leafy greens a day. So every time I make a dish, I ask myself, how can I add more cups? How can I add more greens to that? That's my question. So with the kale, a lot of people do this. They strip it like that and they've left this and that gets tossed out. 
I don't do that because that's totally edible. Eat it, eat it. So what I do, I just chop. I start at this end and I just roughly chop the kale. And as I get down to the end, to where the stem is, I start to cut it finer. So it's in little pieces. And that way it cooks quickly and leaves a little bit of texture, a little bit of a bite in the curry or in the salad, however you're using the kale or the leafy greens. So you just want to cut that really thin. It's important not to waste anything, okay? Don't waste stuff. You know, plants are amazing. You can eat just about all plants. Uh, and, um, you know, the plants that we can eat, we can just eat about eat every part of it. So, kale is done. Put that into a little bowl. So I can take it to the stove nice and easy. Okay, you might be asking, how do you cut this? Now, if you want dinner to be fast, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can cut the potatoes small, okay? The smaller you cut, the potatoes and the pumpkin, the faster the dish will cook. Um, the other thing you can do is this. You can do what I do. Each week, boil up a whole pot of whole potatoes, put them in the fridge, and then when you want to make a curry or, some, or a salad or something with potatoes or chips, okay, in the oven, oven baked or air fried, you just pull out the um, the cooked potato and you just chop that up and throw it in the dish. It doesn't take long to cook, it's just heating through. As soon as it's heated, it's done. That way you can make this curry in about 10 minutes if you've done that. Um, it's gonna take us about half an hour tonight. So just to show you the size that I cut this potato, I just slice it down, skin and all, okay? Ideally, use organic. If you don't want to or can't afford organic, that is super cool. Just use vegetables, just give them a good wash and cut them and eat them, okay? So that's how you do it, just chop them up, just like that. Same with the pumpkin, just cut it up to little pieces if you want it to cook fast. The smaller you cut it, the faster it will cook. If you've got more time, you can leave it on the stove, cut them bigger and you'll get bigger chunks in your curry. Always put your potatoes in water. That way they don't go brown. So for this recipe, these are the ingredients. You got chopped onion, you got chopped tomato, you got um, potato, you've got chopped pumpkin, you've got chopped kale, and you have red curry paste, Thai curry paste. Now make sure it's vegan. Make sure it doesn't have any shrimp paste in it, okay? A lot of the red curries have shrimp, which is prawns. You don't want it, it's not vegan, it's not what we're gonna be eating. Whole food plant-based diet is this, 100% plants. In the form, 99% of the time, in the form that nature hands it to you. Okay, nature hasn't got it wrong. It's got everything packed. All the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that we need and the fiber in its perfect proportions. If we eat it in that proportion, it's the way nature intends us to eat it. And, you, and the body knows what to do with it. Once you start separating it, like taking you know, protein out of it, or taking calcium out of it, or taking the fiber out of it, or taking the oils out of it, then, and consume it separate, the body doesn't know what to do with it and creates illness. Keep it together the way nature gave it to us. That's, that's the only rule I have. Is it in the form nature gave it to me? That, and is it a plant? Two things. If the answer to that is yes for the two of them, I eat it. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, red Thai curry paste. This one here I'm using. Now this has a little bit of oil in it. A whole food plant-based diet doesn't have oil, but because it's just such a small amount of oil in here, I don't fuss about it too much, okay? But I never pour oil into anything. I'm gonna teach you how to cook without oil tonight. You can also buy them without oil or you can make your own. You know, I make big batches and I freeze it in ice cube trays. I take out an ice cube, okay, and then I use that to make my curries with and then it doesn't have any oil in it. 
The other thing I use for this mushroom curry is this curry powder. It's a Malaysian sweet style curry powder, okay? And it's absolutely delicious. A little bit of coconut uh, sugar or palm sugar, palm sugar, coconut sugar, good stuff. Soy sauce, or you can use tamari if you want. I'm just using a soy, um, soy sauce tonight. Tamari, you know, um, is gluten free, has no wheat in it. Now here's the thing, this is not essential, but I've been using this over the last few years. I came across it. Before that, I didn't used to use this in this curry, but it's vegan fish sauce. It's made from cabbage, fermented cabbage. And man, it gives the dish a new dimension. It's absolutely amazing. You want a little bit of lime to balance out flavors and a little bit of coriander. So guys, there are ingredients. You want to go to the stove and start cooking? Hey, let's go over the stove. Right here, I'm gonna move this camera over to here so you can see. Let's see what we can do here, huh? Hey everyone, how you doing? Who's on, who's on this call with me? There's 17 people, that's cool. Who are we? Helene, Ha, oh, Helene, how are you? Good to see ya. And Di, Di Woods, how are you? Okay, let's get into this wok. Let's see if I can get you inside the wok. I'll take my face out of it and see if we can get you in there. Ah, why is that not going up? Let's unscrew this. Hmm. Let's tilt it down. There you go. You can get into the wok that way. Can you see inside the wok, guys? Yep. Actually, I've got some brown rice cooking at the back here. Okay, brown rice takes a little while. I normally use basmati, but I couldn't get basmati today. Um, so it's brown rice and takes half an hour. Basmati takes about 20 minutes. But here, here, guys, <laughs> I'll bring this back up for a sec. So with the, the, guy, the, the rule with the rice, okay, brown rice takes half an hour. Um, you need one cup of rice to um, two cups of water or two and a half cups of water. Basmati rice, same thing, one cup of rice, two cups of water. And you do it on a very low heat, cover it with the water, the rice, heat it up, very low heat, um, with a lid on, and it's called the absorption method. Okay, the absorption method. And actually my pan's boiling up there. It's the absorption method and half an hour, it's ready. It's beautiful. This is ready now. So guys, let's get this show on the road with the pot, the wok. Okay, see inside the wok, all good. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, excellent. So to get things started, no oil in here, okay? There's no oil. You, the trick to it is to make sure it's really hot, okay? This could be on a barbecue, it could be, you know, you could have a frying pan, you could have a deep pot. Same applies whenever you're cooking onions. Get it hot. So when it lands in there, it sizzles. Get it in there, sizzles, 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 sizzles. And then you just stir it and it'll start to caramelize. Now, in the early days, I used to um, put a little bit of water in the pan first and then add the onions. And the problem with that is what happens is the onions steam. They steam instead of caramelizing. And if you want that depth of flavor, like you can't smell this right now, but I can smell this and it's just like you're cooking onion in oil because it's caramelizing, and that's what gives the depth of flavor. So what I do, I saute it until it starts to color, and you can see it coloring now. And then I just add a little water. I just add a little bit of water, just to finish it and steam it through. Okay, now add the curry paste. Mix it through.
and then add the curry powder. Now, it's important when you put this curry powder in that you stir it quickly, because if you leave it too long, it will go bitter if you overcook it. So you just add it and then stir it, but make sure you have the onions ready. So as soon as you can smell the aromas, bang, add the tomatoes. And that'll stop the spices from overcooking and will give a better, smoother flavor. So guys, while that is um, cooking there a bit, um, I, just cook, I just cook it down a little bit and then we'll add all the other ingredients and let it simmer. And we'll have a chat while that's simmering away and I'll answer any questions you have about a whole food plant-based diet and how it helped me go from literally being 110 kilos to having a heart attack to losing 30 kilos and doing an Ironman triathlon. So if you've got any questions about this way of eating and living, um, or about that experience that I had, um, please post them away and I'll answer them while we're waiting for that to cook. But I'm going to go back to the pot now, okay? Okay. Can you see the pot? See the wok, guys? Ah, there we go. That's better. Excellent. So you just stir it. And now we add everything else. So, add the pumpkin. Add the spuds. Add the coconut. That coconut is full of fiber. It's just water and shredded coconut pureed in the blender. So with the fiber intact, like Dr. Michael Greco says, um, it's been shown not to raise cholesterol levels, which is cool, which is cool. So you can get to enjoy curries even on a whole food plant-based diet. Then we add the seasonings. So we add a bit of soy sauce, a couple of tablespoons, or whatever your recipe says. I just, I just, I just pour it in. <laughs> I'm putting in the vegan fish sauce, which you don't have to use. Okay, I've only started using this recently, and that's made from cabbage fermented. It's pretty cool. A bit more soy. A little bit of the um, coconut sugar. And then I just stir it. Okay, got a nice colour. Now that's going to boil away and we're going to simmer it. And just before we finish, um, we'll add the kale to cook that down. Now the reason why we don't put kale in now is because it'll overcook, and there's nothing worse than overcooked greens. It's my pet nightmare. I always add greens just before I serve, so they wilt, go bright green, and then we serve. And we'll season it with a bit of lime, and we'll test the seasoning to see if it's balanced, you know, with the sweet, the salty, the, um, the sour, to make sure that's all good. So guys, while that boils away, how about we go and have a chat about whole food plant-based diet? Sound good? Um, I'm going to pop this onto over here again and um, let's, sorry, <laughs> no one's helping me tonight. I'm the cameraman and the talent, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to lower this and we'll put it on the bench and that way you can be closer and I can talk to you and see what questions you have and answer them for you. Now just remember, I'm, um, I'm a chef, okay? Um, I am not a nutritionist, um, so I cannot diagnose or prescribe anything to you. I'm just sharing with you how to cook a whole food plant-based diet and how it's helped me um, reverse heart disease and get super healthy. 
So um, any questions that are around diagnosis or prescription, can't help you. Okay, you need to go see a plant-based doctor or a doctor. Excuse me one sec. Okay. How's that? Can you see me okay? Cool. We can see the pot boiling there, which is cool. Let's plug this in so I don't run out of power. Okay. Has anyone got any questions? Let me... Okay, Helene has asked how much shredded coconut and how much water? Helene, great question, thanks for asking it. This is it, one part, this is what I do, and you can make it however you want, but I do one part of shredded coconut to four parts water. One cup of shredded coconut to four parts water. Hope that helps. Um, you could do half a cup to four cups water. Doesn't matter, <laughs> up to you, um, work it out. I wouldn't go any more than one cup to four though. Otherwise, it become too calorie dense and you may put on some weight. Um, okay, what have we got? Um, Tony. Tony, Adam has put recipes up for you to print it out, guys. That's right. They're, if you want the recipes, they're on my Facebook page, okay? Um, on the I Feel Good Facebook page where I posted today. So if you scroll through that, um, the recipe's there if you, wanna, if you want it. Um, Diane says... Get all your prep done, Adam, including your computer. <laughs> yep, will do. So has anyone got any questions? What else we got? Um, Leone says, is it coconut milk or cream? So Leone, good question. You may have missed that at the start. Um, it's not out of the can. Um, I've made it fresh, and it's not how you traditionally make coconut milk or cream. The way people traditionally make coconut milk and cream is that they boil it, um, they puree the... Um, they dry the coconut, the white bit inside, and make it go really hard. And then what they do, they grate that, and they put it in water, and then they put it through a, like a cheesecloth or a muslin cloth and make all the oil drip out. And that's what coconut milk and cream is. And the difference is one's got more water in it, that's the coconut milk, and one's got um, uh, less water in it, and that's coconut cream. Now, but it doesn't have any fiber in it. And the problem with not having the fibre in it, according to Dr. Greger, if you go to his website, um, he's just written a book called How Not to Die. It's all plant-based. And he has a little video on there that explains that when you separate the fibre from the coconut and the oil, when you separate that from the coconut, um, that coconut oil, which is coconut cream, coconut milk, coconut oil, um, has been shown to raise cholesterol. And whenever... Cholesterol is risen, according to the doctors, um, the plant-based doctors. It raises um, your um, it raises your cholesterol in the body. So saturated fat from the, the saturated fat in the coconut raises your cholesterol in the body. And when your cholesterol rises in your body, you're at more risk of heart disease. Now, what I've done is just taken shredded coconut, which still has the fibre and the oils intact. Okay, I soak it in some water, put it into a blender and I use that in my curries. And therefore I get the fiber, I get the whole food. And um, according to Dr. Greger, that hasn't been shown to raise that saturated fat in there when it's with the fiber, doesn't raise your cholesterol. So I hope that helps there. Answer that question for you, Leonie. Who else we got? Julie Blake. It makes a big difference made um, from fermented cabbage. Smells and tastes like the real thing. Yeah, that's the... Um, the fish, uh, the vegan fish sauce, Julia. I'm assuming that you're uh, talking about that. Okay. Anyone got any questions about it while we're cooking that? Um, a whole food plant based diet. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, how did you start out? What did your meals consist of when you began? Great question, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, I started out with all my favourites. Okay, but I played around with them, and I turned them into whole food plant-based. And hey, I see Greg Twemlow. Greg Twemlow is on the, on the line, guys. And it's really good that you've asked that question, Elizabeth, because Greg can vouch for this. Greg, um, Greg actually um, 
What happened after the heart attack, I actually started making my own meals. And I thought it'd be really cool to make an app that te- with a meal plan, number one, to keep me on track with the meals, and number two, other people might be interested in it. So I knew Greg, he lived in the same village as me in Berry on the south coast, and he was vegan as well. And I said to um, Greg, and he was also super good on camera, he was a cameraman, and, and so I said, man, I want to do this app, can you film me while we make all these recipes? And Greg did, so we joined up and um, we made an app, which still goes today, it's on iTunes, we publish to it every single week, and um, it gives you a meal plan, and it gives you, um, it gives you a recipe, a shopping list to go and buy stuff, um, and bring it back and just cook it, and you don't have to think. Everything, you know, your five meals for the week are all planned out. You just go and do it. And I've got videos. Greg shot and edited the videos. And, you know, you just press play and it shows you the step. And then you pause it and do the step. And that's how we did it. Now, the foods I ate, I used to love spaghetti bolognese. So I went to wholemeal pasta. Now, I don't like wholemeal pasta. It is disgusting, okay? But I found other ones um, that, like, kumarit pasta and other types of wholemeal type pastas, grain pastas and rice, brown rice pastas that um, are softer and they're beautiful. So I use that and I made a spaghetti bolognese and I've got so many different ones now. Sometimes I do it with tofu, sometimes I do it with red kidney beans, sometimes I do it with lentils, sometimes I do it with chickpeas. So you just take your favourite recipe, okay, of bolognese and you replace the mince with Um, one of those things that I just mentioned, and you get a really good bolognese. It's super good. Um, So, and pizza was another good one. So how do I do that? I made a, went and got Lebanese bread, okay? Went and got Lebanese bread wholemeal with no oil in it. And I just topped that with um, a tomato-based sauce and loads of veggies. And, um, And then later on down the track, I discovered a thing that I sort of created called a cashew sour cream. And it makes like a, if you do it thick, it makes makes it like a sloth mozzarella and you can blob it on top of the pizza. You pop it in that oven and after 10 minutes it comes out super crispy on the bottom, whole food plant-based, amazing. You won't even miss the cheese, I tell you. It's so good. So that was another one. Um, I used to like soups and broths. I love salads. Um, But I just... You know, I took my favourite dishes, and it was harder back then, but it's super easy now. You can just go online and Google, you know, your favourite dish vegan, and you're going to get hundreds of different recipes that are veganized. They may not be whole food plant-based. So to make them whole food plant-based, leave the oil out and um, make sure the ingredients are whole and not refined products. Like, don't use white flour, use wholemeal flour. Don't use white bread, use brown bread, you know, wholemeal bread. Don't use white pastas, use the brown pastas. You get the idea. So um, they're the sort of things I did. And then I progressed, you know, um, because I had this amazing result and because I was a chef and because I had this knowledge and I just wanted to share it, I created a program called the I Feel Good program. And it's a four or five week program. And now it's actually a membership where we've got a cooking school in there and we've got the meal plans in there and we've got a Facebook group that we encourage and share things and we've got a four week program. And I took people through this program and the results have been amazing. Over 100 people have done it now and there's people in that program um, within five weeks, and it's consistent, blood pressure drops, cholesterol drops, um, body weight drops from two to 10 kilos, um, skin conditions clear up, energy comes up, people start to feel good, that's why it's called I Feel Good. And um, that's just in five weeks. Now, people in that group have been going for five, six, seven, eight months now. One guy in 12 weeks, type 2 diabetic, he is no longer diabetic. His doctor has taken him off all medications. It's incredible. He's lost all this weight. He's in his BMI. And it's incredible. There's other people that lost up to 30 kilos. And they don't go hungry. How cool is it to eat so much and never go hungry? Like, guys, this, it's like, it's the holy grail, in my opinion. Like, you know, I always struggle with my weight. Up and down, up and down. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Diet after diet to try and get it under control. But, man, you can eat. 
a good amount of food and don't go hungry eating this way and it works. There's certain principles you need to understand. We teach you all of that in the four week program. The four week program, um, it teaches you all about protein, you know, plant based nutrition, where you get your protein, where you get your calcium if you don't drink cow's milk. You know, all of that stuff is in it. But more importantly, I give you meal plans that are easy to do. I teach you how to prep so it's easy. You can just make it really quick, okay? You just make it really quick. You open that fridge and put a dish together within 15 minutes, sometimes five. And um, that's been able to help a lot of people make this transition. And they're doing super well with it, just like I did. It's incredible. So if you're interested in that, go to my website. Um, you know, you can do a monthly um, subscription or you can save 50% and join for a year. Totally up to you. But it's a great group, great community. And um, we're, you know, people are producing amazing results. So um, that's what I used to eat, Elizabeth. Anyone else got any questions while we wait for this to cook? Um, Diane, how long did you soak it before the blender, Adam? Great, great question, Diane. Um, tonight, I soaked it for about an hour. You can soak it overnight. Or you could actually just pop it in the blender and do it if you wanted to. I'd use hot, you know, warm water, though, if I did that. So not long. Um, what else we got here? Greg, hey, buddy. Good to see you. You too, man. Okay, Karen, uh, this curry is absolutely delicious. Yeah, it sure is, Karen. Um, what have we else we got? Hey, Corolla, how are you? Man, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, my, a lot of people from our group are in here tonight. Thanks for joining, guys. Mate, share your experience, if you want, in regards to your results. I mean, it's so inspiring to share with people that are just starting this journey. Share your results with them, guys, because... You know, it's not just one or two of us, it's heaps of us that are producing these results and how easy it is. And that is encouraging and motivating and inspiring for others to see it could be possible for them too. Because we're just ordinary people. I'm just an ordinary guy, okay? I was fat, I was overweight, and I had a heart attack. But I came across this, and I didn't invent this. I just started following it, and it works. It really works. So guys, if you're up to it, share your, share your results with people. Um, who else we got? Okay, this is boiling a bit. I'm going to head over there and give it a stir so it doesn't stick on the bottom. Okay, that's, um, that's going probably another five or ten minutes and it'll be ready. Who else is here? Um, okay, oh, guys are posting. Cool. Okay, any more questions? Okay, so many food allergies, dairy, cashews. Okay, there's a lot of food allergies. But I tell you what, people in our group have had food allergies too. And over time, and especially gut issues and, and irritable bowel syndrome and stuff like that. And, and what they found over time by introducing this food, um, everything just sort of just heals up. It's incredible. And the allergies that you used to have sort of disappear, especially when it comes to the plants. I mean, the dairy stuff you know, is, is actually, you know, in my experience, causes a lot of problems. Um, okay, so, Andrew White, Drop Kennedy. Guys, man, it's amazing what you guys have done. So, um, let me, would you like to know a bit more about a whole food plant-based diet while that finishes cooking? I'll share with you the principles, okay? And I will share with you... Um, Actually, I'll post it, I won't get it now, but it's something I call the I Feel Good Plate. And um, it's something that I've worked on over time. And, but these are the principles. Number, the first principle is this, no animal products at all. And you might be thinking, Adam, if I give that up, what am I gonna eat? I tell you, there is so much you can eat. There's more plants than there are animals, okay? There's so much variety and diversity. The challenge is you may not know, have a repertoire of those recipes yet, but I tell you, you're not gonna miss anything. You can even have your favorites. There's a plant-based version of your favorites, okay? So first is ditch the meat. Second principle is this, um, ditch the, um, uh, ditch eggs and dairy, which are animal products as well, okay? That's it. I'm not gonna go into the reasons why, but these are just the principles. There's plenty of information out there on the web of the whys. Go and watch Forks Over Knives, go and watch um, 
what the health, go to some of these plant-based doctors like Cordell Esselstyn, go to Dr. John um, McDougall, go and check out um, Dr. John, uh, Dr. Michael Greger, and there's heaps of other doctors with loads of info on their website that will explain the science to you. I'm just an average guy. Science isn't my thing. Mine is doing, you know, I like just doing. And if it works, I keep doing it. I put it to this, you know, it's like this. You don't need to understand how electricity works to go and use, turn on the lights. How that works. You just need to learn to go and turn on the light switch and the light comes on. But similar to this, I take this approach. Um, with doing the food, it's just, I just need to know um, what foods to eat that give me that result. And I do, and it gives me a result. So, um, so number one is get rid of the meat, get rid of the dairy, get rid of the eggs, out of the way. Next is get rid of oils. Now people go, oil, but isn't olive oil healthy? Isn't coconut oil healthy? Guess what guys, it ain't. It ain't. Not if you wanna reverse heart disease, okay? Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, you know, he's, his program reverses heart disease and it's, it doesn't have any oil. And he says, don't have the oil, okay? So I don't have the oil. Now the reason being is this, um, is oil a whole food, yes or no? Or is it something that's been extracted from the food? It's been extracted, it's not the whole food. It's just, it's just pure fat, super high in calorie, okay? Super high in calorie and hardly any nutrition, almost none, okay? But when that, let's say olive oil, when that oil is in the olive, okay? with all the fiber and other nutrients around it, it's in its perfect proportion and the body knows what to do with it when it puts it into the body. And it can assimilate it properly into your cells and grow new cells and make you feel good. But if you just drink it and put it, cook with it and pour it over stuff, the body doesn't know what to do with it. And it creates illness. So um, all the plant-based diet doctors agree, ditch the oil, they're refined, they're not whole food. That's why you don't do it. Um, and also, oil damages the endothe endothelial cells. I hope I pronounced that right, I'm not sure. But the endothelium cells, which are the inside cells that line the inside wall of your artery. And they've been shown to damage that, make them brittle. And when they get brittle, they tear. And when they tear, a blood clot comes to heal the cut, and it stops the blood flow, and you have a heart attack. That's exactly what happened to me at 39. You see it with all these guys that are super fit. I wasn't fit, but you see it with super fit guys on their bikes, falling off. And unfortunately, they don't make it. Not many people survive a heart attack. So please, guys, ditch the oils, ditch the meats, okay? They're the two principles. And then the other principle is this. Just eat food in the way nature hands it to you. Plants. So many plants. Just eat them the way nature gives them to you. Don't drink the apple juice. Eat the apple, okay? Don't drink the orange juice. Eat the orange. That's how it is. I'm going back over here. This is nearly ready. Oh, yum. Okay, need a spoon, tasting spoon. So we're just about done, guys. That is super good. I can't wait till you make this at home. And we're going to balance it out with a bit of lime and also this. So I'm going to come over to here. Hold on one sec. Just got to unplug something. Okay, kale into the pot. Give it a good stir. And you watch it change color. It's going bright green. I'm turn that off now. It's got another, look at it. There you go, look at it, the color change. And that's just gonna soften in there. Because kale can be a bit chewy. So you just submerge it, submerge it, and just let it steam away. Now, while that's steaming away, Let's go back and we'll grab the limes. Now to season it with some lime juice, you just squeeze in half a lime. Give it a taste at half first. 
And if you, if you feel it needs a little bit more, then you can add the other. Now, I've tasted this, doesn't need any more salt, doesn't need any more pepper, doesn't need any more sweetening because the pumpkin's quite sweet. So the balance of flavour is good. I teach you how to balance flavour in our program in the cooking school, how to get the sweet, sour, salty right, because when you get that right, and um, you can't stop licking the bowl. That's the art of cooking, where you eat something and go, that is so good, I can't stop eating it. It means the balance of flavour is right. That's perfect as is. So, guys, I'm going to bring this over now. Over here. Ah. And we're going to take that back a bit. And you can see the curry. I'm going to duck down. Let's bring it here. There's the curry and I've got some rice. Some brown rice. And then you can just take some fresh coriander and place it around if you want to. If you've got some red chilies, I don't have, slice them, pop it on top, looks amazing. If you've got some cashew sour cream, actually I do have some cashew sour cream. I tell you what makes food look amazing is red, white and green. Okay? If you want food to look good on the plate, on the table, you want to get this fresh, vibrant green, a bit of red. Now, if I had some red chilli, which I don't have, if I had some red chilli, which I don't have, I'd slice that up thinly and put it over the top, and that looks amazing. Okay? I'm going to serve some up. Just let me get a plate. I might do it in a coconut bowl, huh? So, I'm going to start with a little bit of rice. Okay, with the rice, and then in with the curry. So, there we go. Musselman curry, guys. There's the musselman curry. I can eat, like, this little bowl is pretty small. I'd normally eat double that size. But enjoy it. It is so... Mmm, it's hot. <laughs> it's so hot, not spicy hot. It's just that they come out of the pan. But I would just take that wok, pop it on the table, let everyone serve themselves. So guys, that's my musman curry. Inspired by May KD in Thailand at her cooking class. So if you enjoyed tonight, um, Give us a thumbs up, love hearts. If you've got any questions, leave them below. If you want to go and join um, me and learn more about this way of eating and get some amazing results, come and join us in the I Feel Good um, hub, I'm calling it now. The I Feel Good hub. Because it's a hub and all the resources that you need are there. Okay. Plus you get coaching from me daily. Every day you can ask a question in Facebook. Every single day and I answer it. Every day. Plus we do a weekly um, coaching session um, on a Wednesday night. You can join that live on Facebook. Plus there's cooking classes in there and there's meal plans in there and there's the four week program. I'd love to see you there um, if you wanna join us. If not, that's cool. Just send me a message, follow us along on Facebook and Instagram. And um, if you want me to do more of these, I'm happy to do it. Maybe we'll make it a, like Monday nights with Adam in the kitchen. I can send you out the recipe and you cook it, huh? I don't know, up to you. So um, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. I'm here to help. I just, you know, I think it's criminal that more people don't know about this, that governments haven't shared this information of how powerful this way of eating is in healing. I really want to do this because I never had this choice. You know, I went to the doctors and they never gave me the choice to have a whole food plant-based diet um, instead of medications, okay? And medications are good, they'll heal you, you know, they'll, they'll stop you from dying, okay, but they, and they can make you, they're good in an emergency situation, but long term, if you change the way you eat and the way you move and the way you pause, but 95% of it, the way you eat, seriously, magic happens. 
magic, magic happens to your health. And I just want to go and share this message with as many people as possible because there's so many people suffering from heart disease, diabetes, obesity, autoimmune diseases, um, that this sort of way of eating can prevent and actually heal. It's not just me. There's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people that are starting to heal now. So I just want to share with people that eating whole plants, okay, prevents and reverses heart disease because it happened to me and it's happened to others. So guys, good night. Lots of love. Take care. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm going to have dinner with my family. See ya.